coin toss has been won by Purdue. They choose to receive. Notre Dame is going to kick off, and we are ready to go. And here, with a play-by-play, -play, Mutual's voice of Notre Dame football, Al Wester. It's Purdue and Notre Dame. And hold on to your seats, because here we go with football action over Mutual around the world. Reeve has his hands up, waiting for the whistle. Now, he comes forward. The Irish line advances, and the kick is down. It is Moss waiting for it. No, it is Pope who has the ball at the 10, up to the 15, to the 18-yard line. He's hit out of bounds by Luther Bradley, as Bradley bounces him out at about the 18-yard line. So it'll be Purdue's football, first down, as it's brought in at the 18-yard line and in the backfield. Mark Herman, number nine at quarterback, number 81, Ray Smith, is the wide receiver. The setbacks will be number 32, Mike Brown, and number 31, John Skabinski. Breaking the huddle. Here they come, up to the line. Wide out to the left-hand side is Ray Smith, and splitting out to the right-hand side is Reggie Arnold. In the eye formation, back in a quick pass over the middle. Arnold has the ball. He's up to the 30-yard line, almost to 30. Reggie Arnold made the grab. He's knocked down at the 29. Reggie Arnold on a quick slant in pattern got behind the linebacker in front of the cornerback. Cornerback Luther Bradley respecting Arnold's speed stayed back about five yards. Arnold grabbed it and went up to the 29-yard line. It'll be second down and one for Purdue as they break the huddle this time and come up to the line again. Arnold out wide to the right-hand side. Out. Let's check that. 11 yards on the game, so it'll be first and 10 at the 29-yard line. And here's the handoff to Skabinski, and Skabinski cracks over the middle before Ross Brown wraps him up at about the 32-yard line. Purdue with a first down on the first play. A quick pass, a slant-in pattern from Mark Herman. He hits Reggie Arnold. He sends his fullback up the middle to test the middle of the defensive unit of Notre Dame. And they have Scott Zedek along with Ken Dyke, Jeff Weston, and Ross Brown are in that front four. The linebackers, Heimkreider, Golik, and Becker. Set now with a back over to the right. That's Brown in the slant. A quick pass thrown out intended by Mark Herman to Skabinski. And Skabinski couldn't get his hands on it on the sidelines. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Purdue has the ball at their own 31-yard line. Reggie Arnold had come to the sidelines for the moment. Now he goes back into the ball game. And the big, young, the big quarterback, Mark Herman, who is 6'5", 180 pounds, from Carmel, Indiana, brings his team up in a big third down play early in the ball game. Brown is off to the right. Back goes Herman. He looks. He dumps it off. It's caught by Skabinski at the 35, the 40, the 45. He's up to the 47-yard line. Skabinski, the safety valve man, makes the catch as Herman looks to his left and then throws to the right. Skabinski has now caught 10 passes this season. That's more than he caught all last year in playing for Purdue. They've worked very hard on the passes to the backs, the A and B patterns coming out of the backfield. They send the receivers deep, drive off the cornerbacks, and away they go. 17 yards on the play. First down for Purdue. They have the ball at their own 48-yard line. There's Ray Smith wide out to the left-hand side and Arnold to the right. And Herman is back to throw again. Looks over the middle and he finds his man. He hits him and then the ball is bounces loose. Just as it was caught over there, Jim Browner comes up to make the tackle on Dave Young. Young caught it at the midfield stripe, but he was hit down immediately by Browner. Jarred loose from the football. An incompleted forward pass. Back it comes to the 48-yard line. And the Boilermakers now have a second down 10 situation there. They're moving the football. They're moving it well, Pat. Yes, they are. And they run those patterns to perfection. They've worked hard on it. Herman likes to move from the pro set. He has his back split now. Mike Brown and John Skabinski. Here's the snap. The handoff to Skabinski up the middle. He goes on the, slow, the short draw. He's out to the 50-yard line. He is into Notre Dame territory. Ken Dyke knocks him down at the Notre Dame 49. Let's give him a gain of three and call it third down and seven. 
Coming out of the ball game is Tim Eubank, and going in is the young freshman, Dave Young, who will play a lot of tight end in this ball game today. Jim Young, no, co uh, no kin. The coach, Jim Young, has said that this young freshman, Dave Young, has great, great prospects for the future. The Boilermakers in the set formation. The backs are spread, and back goes Herman. 10, 12 yards. He looks, he throws. Incomplete. Is it intercepted? At the 28-yard line, was the catch made? It was by Joe Restick. Restick went down on the ground. I didn't know whether he had trapped the football pad or not, but he has caught it. No, he did not trap it. The ball was almost tipped and about the 30-yard uh, line. However, Restick did grab it. He did not trap it. He gained possession, and now Notre Dame goes on offense on the 29-yard line, near side of the field. Purdue's offensive line held out the Notre Dame defensive front four very well on that last series. Rusty Lish will quarterback this Notre Dame football team, and in the backfield with him is Jerome Heavens, number 30, and Perry Urich, number 40. Well, now to the right is Dave Wehmer. Chris Haynes is to the left, and here's the handoff instead to Yurik. Yurik trying to turn the right corner. He does, cuts in over the right side. Flags on the play. He gets up to the 33-yard line and fumbles the football, and Purdue has recovered. Purdue has recovered at the Notre Dame 33, but wait for the flag. Purdue with possession of the ball. The Notre Dame defensive team comes on the field. Apparently, Fred Arrington had an infraction called on him, and it might have been defensive holding. It was not. And so, Notre Dame goes on defense, and Purdue takes over. First down, 10 yards to go. Fred Arrington was the man who recovered the football. Linebacker on the left side for the Boilermakers, and it goes over to Purdue. A big break now. The young freshman coming in to quarterback this team, Mark Herman, he's done an excellent job so far, was the UPI Midwest back of the week last week. Great passer, gives you visions of, well, some of the great quarterbacks that have been here at Purdue. Quarterbacks like Dawson and Greasy and Mike Phipps. The line of scrimmage for Purdue is the Notre Dame 32. Phipps has both receivers spread wide, and he drops straight back, 12 yards. Plenty of time. He looks. He throws over the middle. Incomplete. Intended down at the 22-yard line for Tim Eubanks. The flag's on the play, and it may be interference. Interference possibly on Jim Browner of Notre Dame, who might have made an early hit on the receivers. That's what it's going to be, and that'll be a first down for Purdue as Purdue gets the ball on about the 22-yard line against Notre Dame. The Purdue receivers run the good patterns, but as you see this Mark Herman set up, he's 6'5 in the pocket, a straight drop back passer. He can really see the field. Eubank comes out at the tight end. Dave Young comes in. That's the way they send the plays in. Here is Russ Christensen in at the free safety. Jim Browner goes out on defense for Notre Dame. It is second down 10. Or first and ten, I beg your pardon. First and ten at the 22-yard line. A handoff, a quick handoff there, given to Mike Brown on the slant. Bob Golick hits him right at the line of scrimmage. He's knocked down at the 22-yard line. No gain whatsoever. So the Boilermakers now rotating that tight end in, in and out. Eubank comes back in. Young comes to the sidelines. And Mark Herman, the young freshman from Carmel, Indiana, doing a very fine job of quarterbacking this football team. He looks over the defenses, and from six foot five, you can see a lot of them. Has the snap, back in the pocket he goes. Goes over the middle with a short pass. It is downfield, knocked out of bounds, out of the hands of the receiver. Reggie Arnold and their flags on the play. Restick was there, so was Russ Christensen, both of them, right on top of the receiver. Restick uh, hit him high, and the ball was jarred loose, and the officials say it's interference on Notre Dame again. Purdue gets it first, and goal to go, and the line of scrimmage will be on about the nine-yard line. So Mark Herman has a moving. He not only led his team to the state high school uh, football title here but in Indiana, but he also led them to the basketball title. There is no score in the football game. Purdue and Notre Dame battling right now. And Purdue, down inside of the Notre Dame 10-yard line, they have a first down and goal to go from the Notre Dame 8-yard line. Up to the line they come. Both receivers are wide. Back goes Herman. He looks. He loops one into the end zone. Out of the hands of fullback John Skabinski. Skabinski went into the corner pocket there. Went out of bounds trying to reach the football. Could not get to it. Right on top of him was Ross Christensen. And moving over to cover was linebacker Steve Heimkrater. 
All right, Mark Herman right now has completed two of six for a total of 28 yards, and we've got an injured player. So, with the score, Notre Dame nothing for do nothing. There's a timeout on the field now. This for True Value of Hardware. The injured player is Joe Rustick of Notre Dame. He is also, besides being an outstanding safety for the Notre Dame secondary, an outstanding putter for the team, and he is being helped off the field. It looks like it might be a leg injury. We'll keep an eye on that for you. 11.30 to 4 to go in the first quarter. Purdue down in Notre Dame territory. Second ball, second down, eight yards to go. Wide to the right comes Ray Smith. Reggie Arnold split out to the left. The setbacks are spread as Herman comes up to the line. As the snap and hands off and driving up the left side over the center, Mike Brown gets inside of the four, inside of the five. He's knocked down at the five-yard line, the official says, by Randy Harrison and by Jeff Weston. Now, we've got two substitutions at safety right now defensively for Notre Dame. Ross Christensen is playing in place of Jim Browner, and the injured Joe Restick has been replaced by Randy Harrison. The cornerbacks have Ted Bergmeyer and Luther Bradley. The linebackers Doug Becker, Bob Golick, and Steve Heimkreider. While we've got Zedek, Dyke, Weston, and Browner in the front line up there now. Both the wide receivers are strong to the right. It is third down and goal from the five. And back goes Herman. He throws out in the flat. It's caught by Skavinsky. He's knocked down by Doug Becker immediately. Becker caught him at the eight-yard line for a three-yard loss. It's pretty hard for a linebacker to stay with a fullback, but Becker, who runs the 40-yard dash in about 4-7, had no problem. He stayed right on top of the fullback, Skavinsky, coming out of the backfield and wrapped him up on about the nine-yard line. Scott Sovereign will be in there to try to kick the field goal. He'll kick at an angle from the hash marks on the right side, the near side of the field. It'll be a 25-yard field goal attempt. The kick is up. He's a left footer. He's got his foot into it, and it is good. So there's a timeout here with a score. Purdue three, Notre Dame nothing. A 25-yard field goal, and the Boilermakers are on the scoreboard. They'll kick off from down at the 40 and back deep for Notre Dame at the moment. As we get set for the Irish to receive, I believe, Randy Harrison. Jim Browner, number 33, at the goal line. Randy Harrison, number 10, up at the five-yard line. The Lazy Boy Chair Company, again, will award a Lazy Boy Chair to the schools of the outstanding offensive and defensive players in today's game. Our judges are Bob Pilly of the Chicago Sun-Times, Tom Kubat of the Lafayette Journal and Courier, and Wayne Fuson of the Indianapolis News. And we'll announce the winners at the conclusion of today's ball game. It's Notre Dame and Purdue. The Boilermakers lead in the ball game 3 0. A 25 yard field goal after they moved down, were thrown back 10 yards, took the fourth down to put it up between the uprights. And the man who is uh, teeing that ball up and set to kick it off is Savarine, the young man who kicked the field goal just moments ago. Here's the whistle. He puts his foot into it, a long one. Jim Browner moves up to the 5, catches it at the 10. To the 15, he goes the 20, the 25-yard line. Browner is down at the 25, and the Irish will put it in play there. Notre Dame so far has had uh, two very crucial interference penalties on it and also has fumbled the ball once. That set up the last Purdue drive. The Fighting Irish came in with the knowledge that Purdue had 115 yards and penalties on it last week and seven turnovers against Michigan State. Jerome Heavens and Terry Urick are the setbacks that'll be behind Rusty Lish when they break the huddle, and here they come. Dave Waymer splits out wide to the left-hand side, and Chris Haynes goes to the right. The Irish with a pro set in the backfield. First down from their own 25-yard line, a five-man defensive line. 5-2 Oklahoma set up ahead of them. The hand is given off to Jerome Heavens, and Heavens tries to cut in off the right tackle. He's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. He was hit down by Lee Larkins, a big defensive left end of the Boilermakers. Larkins, the player who said ever since he heard that he was on a team that would play the Notre Dame in 1977, said he had a whole year to think about playing against Ken McAfee. That time he got in and made a good shoestring tackle. Brad Arrington and Ken Motz are the linebackers, while Turner, Lauschen, Rui, Jackson, and Larkins are the front five for the Boilermakers, and here's a second and ten situation, and Lish is back to pass. He looks. He goes for the long bomb. It's incomplete. He overthrows Ty Dixon. 
Ty Dickerson made the move, and he was down at the midfield stripe and just crossing the 50, but the ball was a good 10 yards ahead of him. And Cliff Harris coming over from his safety spot had it well covered. Harris comes from Chicago Vocational High School, coached by a living legend there, Bernie O'Brien, Keena Turner at right end, also from Chicago Vocational. Those guys did nothing but win in high school. Chris Haynes is back in the game now at the split end, and Haynes will go out wide to the right. Wide to the left is Dave Weimer. He is calling the signals with a third down 10 situation from his own 25-yard line. He has the snap on the option, rolls to the left. He looks, he sets, he'll throw. He throws into the turf up at the 35-yard line intended for Dave Weimer. But Weimer was a good five yards away, and so far, Alicia has not been able to find the range. And he had Supan beaten on the play, too. So Notre Dame is in a situation where they're going to have to cough up the ball with fourth down. Purdue has been able to move it. Notre Dame has not so far. Purdue leads 3 to nothing. In to do the punting now is Kevin Muno. Kevin Muno comes in to kick because Restick was injured. Muno will stand on about his 10-yard line. Jerome King and Pat Harris are the deep backs, and here is the kick. It is a high boomer. It's a floater. Up to the 40. Fair catch call for Jerome King makes it at the Purdue 40-yard line, and there they will take possession after a 36-yard kick by Muno. You can see how important it is for Purdue to beat Notre Dame. The Purdue players, offensive and defensive, as they come on and off the field, are slapping each other on the back. They're fired up. Mark Herman stands and calls the signals. And as they break the huddle, Smith is wide to the right. Reggie Arnold is out to the left. The I formation in the backfield with Brown and Skabinski right behind the quarterback, Mark Herman. And Herman hands it to his fullback. Right up the middle goes Skabinski. He's over the 40. He's to the 42-yard line. He's knocked down at the 42 by Jeff Weston. Weston and Bob Golick along with Steve Heimkreiter in the middle there hold him to just about a two-yard pickup. So it'll be second and eight for the Boilermakers from their 42. It's pretty hard to run against the Irish in the middle of the line, mainly because of the presence of Golick, but they've got to try in order to get protection for their passer. Skabinski and Brown in that eye formation as they set up now for the big second down and rolling out to the right-hand side. Herman looks. He's going to throw. He knifes one out there. It is off the fingertips of Jim Brown, who almost intercepted and into the hands of Dave Young, the intended receiver. Oh, there's a tough break for the Irish. Almost an interception by Browner instead of reception by Dave Young. It's at the 47-yard line of Notre Dame, 11-yard gain, first down for Purdue. Now you mentioned how their coach, Jim Young, has so much faith in this young man, he made a brilliant catch on the last play. First down for the Boilermakers at the Notre Dame 47-yard line. Over the ball goes Steve Schlunt, the center. Herman has the snap, two steps back, throws a little quick pass to the sidelines and overthrows his intended receiver, Reggie Arnold. Down the sidelines there, that was Luther, Rad Luther Bradley moving over to uh, pick him up if he really and truly intended to go long. But that was a little one-two quick time pattern, Pat, that uh, quarterback Mark Herman throws so well. They have uh, worked these uh, very quick timing patterns to perfection. And in particular, I'm very impressed with the way Jim Young has worked his backs out of the backfield. Their timing on those plays is beautiful. Scott Zedek getting his first start ever at the defensive right end for Notre Dame. And the big boy was thrilled to death. Now both the wide receivers are split over to the left-hand side. Instead, a handoff, a quick handoff, and a slant by Mike Brown. And Brown tracks to the 45 and down to the 42-yard line before Luther Bradley comes up from the corner and corners him for Notre Dame. There's a nice gain for the Boilermakers. They have it down, knocking uh, at the 40-yard line of the Irish. The ball is at the Irish 41-yard line. It'll be third down and a long three yards for Purdue. Big third down play coming up. Arnold is wide to the left. In the slot to the left is Ray Smith. Herman has the snap. Rolling out to the left. Good protection. He looks. He throws one down. It's complete to Arnold at the 30. And Arnold is out of bounds. Reggie Arnold is out of bounds across the way at the 25-yard line. 
first down for Purdue, and Mark Herman is reaching the mark. That is the sixth first down in the ball game for Purdue. Notre Dame does not have a single one as yet. The Boilers are moving the ball, and they're making the fans here in West Lafayette happy. And Arnold knows now goes above his entire total for pass receptions last year. He's only played in about two games up to this point. First down, Boilermakers at the Notre Dame 25-yard line. Arnold left, Smith to the right. Herman with a snap. Notre Dame trying to put the pressure on. He throws over. It is complete at the 18-yard line on the crossing pattern to big tight end. Freshman Dave Young makes a catch at the 20. He's down at the 18-yard line. And again, Luther Bradley responsible for the tackle. And again, Mark Herman shows us that he really knows how to spot players in the open field. He has shown a unique ability, not only as far as timing is concerned, but also an ability to look off a receiver and throw to somebody else. Seven and a half minutes, 7.25 in the clock running, remaining in the first quarter. Purdue leads 3-0 over the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame as Herman brings him up to the line. 59 yards he's passed for, 7 of 11 completions. He pitches out this time to Skavinsky. Skavinsky tries to turn the left side, hit down behind the line, back at the 20-yard line by big Jeff Weston. Weston is some kind of a story, the big defensive left tackle for Notre Dame. He's got the worst knee pad I have ever seen a football player have. He's been operated on, but he has a great heart. He wanted to play, and Weston is in there playing, even with the bum knee, and doing a great job. The Irish need his strength in the defensive line. Notre Dame veered right on that play. They knew Purdue was going that way for some reason. The linebacker blitzed and got him high. Weston got him low. Third down and a short five for Purdue at the 20-yard line of the Irish. And here is Herman with a snap. The big freshman rolls to the right. He's being rushed. He dumps the football off. It is complete at the 10-yard line. And out of bounds with the ball is Ray Smith. Smith made the catch and went flying out of bounds. Let's see where they bring you in. At about the eight-yard line. Notre Dame had blitzing linebackers on that play. Doug Becker was right on top of Herman, but Herman, with a quick release, got the ball away, but he paid for it after he threw the ball because Becker waffled him in the backfield. Who has the ball on the eight-yard line? Doug Becker calls the defensive signals for Notre Dame. He aligns his team now on the defense they're going to use. Both wide receivers for Purdue, Ray Smith and Reggie Arnold, are to the left. Arnold is in the slot out there. Herman with a first and goal from the eighth. Rolling out to the left, looks into the end zone. Rifles one down there. Touchdown, Purdue! Reggie Arnold makes the catch. Touchdown for the Boilermakers! in nine plays, Pat. And the Boilermakers now are in front nine to nothing. And did you notice on the last play, Tech Bergmeyer had him covered. Arnold just got the ball beyond Bergmeyer's reach. You couldn't ask a defensive back to cover a play better. Pass was perfect and so was the catch. Here's a point after try. Sovereign is the man who'll attempt. Steps forward, puts his foot into it, the kick is up, it is good. So with the score, Purdue 10, Notre Dame nothing. There's a timeout on the field. Now this for Buick Automobiles. Purdue will kick the football off. There's Sovereign teeing it up down at the 40-yard line, and Notre Dame has down deep Jim Browner at about the two-yard line, and around the five-yard line is Randy Harrison. It's 10 to nothing. Notre Dame trailing the Boilermakers of Purdue, and the young freshman quarterback of Purdue is some kind of a football player, Mark Herman. He is as cool as I have seen. Sovereign waits for the whistle. 69,700 jammed in here, and here's the kick. Long one. Browner? No. Yes. No, indeed. It was not Browner. Moving over to make the catch was Harrison. And Randy Harrison let it bounce off of his chest at the 10-yard line all the way up to the 16. And then he covered the football. The ball is placed down at the 17-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Irish at their own 17-yard line. The ball is about 20 yards in from the far sidelines at the hash mark. Purdue goes into defensive football. Notre Dame takes over the offense. There's Turner, Lauschen, Rui, Jackson, and Larkin in that defensive front line for the Boilermakers. Lish, Rusty Lish, quarterbacking the Irish, has the snap. 
Throws out to the left. He looks on the run. He throws complete at the 34-yard line, the 25-yard line. Waymer has the football. Doubles back. Is caught back at the 21. Caught back at the 21-yard line. While we've got a moment, let's pause for station identification. This is Mutual, your news and sports radio network. You can win tickets to Notre Dame games. Details on WAIT Chicago 820 Radio. They're stepping off a penalty against the Purdue Boilermakers. The official is going to set it down on about the 37-yard line. And the call on that penalty is interference. I believe it's an interference call. No, it's a personal foul. Personal foul against the... Uh, Purdue, after Waymer caught the ball, uh, apparently somebody had a late shot. So the Irish will have a first down at their own 37-yard line, and Gary Forstack is call calling the signals now for Notre Dame. He's in there at the quarterback slide. Forstack has the football, gives it off to Yurik. Yurik tracks over the right guard, up to the 40-yard line, and down at the 42-yard line. Fred Arrington makes the stop. On Terry Yurik, the offensive co-captain of this football team, he and Ken Lauschen are responsible for the tackle. The original line of scrimmage at 37, and the ball is put down at about the 41. So we'll call it second down and six for Notre Dame. They trail in the ball game by a score of 10 nothing. Purdue is out in front. Evans and Urick are the setbacks behind Forstick. Barstick is, has the football, drops back to throw, dumps it off on a screen pass to Yurik at the 40. He's at the 45. He's up to the midfield strike at the 49-yard line. The official says he stepped out of bounds. Fred Arrington ran him out just shy of the midfield strike. So far today, Purdue has 94 yards. Notre Dame just 15, but Notre Dame has started now to put the ball in the air, realizing that the Boilermakers are playing up on the line of scrimmage and uh, coming in very aggressively. That last play by Yurik, for instance, was a cutback play. You'll see more of that. Tom Doman is in there at the, flat, at the wide receiver, and he has uh, split out wide to the right. That's Chris Haynes to the left. And here is Yurik in the slot to the right, and a handoff to Heaven straight up the middle over the midfield stripe into Purdue territory, down to the Purdue 47. Ken Lauschen. Makes a tackle on him. We have five minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the first period here from West Lafayette, Indiana. Now, Wester. Now, mutual crew all set to bring you the Notre Dame football action against Purdue, and it's been Purdue most of the afternoon. Here's the second down six situation, and Gary Forstick has the snap, giving it off to Heaven. Evans tries to swing wide right around the left side. He's caught behind the line and dropped back at the 47-yard line by Pat Harris. Absolutely no blocking on that side. Nobody there to protect Evans as he went to the left side. Evans uh, obviously was supposed to go to the inside, chose to cut to the outside, and Purdue was just waiting there for him with three tacklers. So Notre Dame now with a third down seven. And the ball at the 47-yard line of the Boilermakers. A big third down play for the Irish. There's Tom Doman wide to the right. Haynes is split out to the left. The setbacks are in a pro set. Barstick is waiting for the snap. A four-man rush. They're expecting the pass. Back goes Gary. He throws to the sideline. Beautiful pass, but he overshoots the intended receiver, Tom Doman. Doman was down at the 25, and he was behind the cornerback. No question about it. He had Jerome King beat on the play. King was back waiting on about the 33-yard line, wondering where Doman was. Doman was loose. He was beyond him. Downfield, but the pass was just a little too high. Kevin Muno is in the ball game. He'll have to punt again. The Irish have had their problems. Jerome King and Pat Harris are the men deep for the Boilermakers to get the kick. They're standing at the 10-yard line, and Muno waits for the snap. Back comes the football, Muno will come forward, puts his foot into it, wobbly short kick, going to hit on about the 25, down to the 10. It takes a Notre Dame bounce inside the 10-yard line at the 8. So with the score, Purdue 10, Notre Dame nothing. There's a timeout on the field. Now this for Lazy Boy Chairs. Purdue has the football at their own 8-yard line, and here's a handoff from Herman to Skabinski. Skabinski cracks over the left guard, brings it up to about the 9-yard line. Steve Heimkreider. The strong side linebacker for Notre Dame, along with Scott Zedeker in on the tackle. 
As they unpile them, they put it down. A gain of just about a yard, so we'll call it second down and nine. The Boilermakers 10-0 out in front at Notre Dame now. With a strong defensive unit in there trying to contain the passing of the young freshman quarterback from Carmel, Indiana. Herman has his hands under the center with a second and nine situation. He has the snap. He pitches it out. It is Skavinsky. Skavinsky wide to the left. Cuts in at the 10-yard line. Doug Becker upends him. Up went his feet. Out went his feet from under him. And up in the air, he went to the 11-yard line. There is a flag on the play back at the nine. And it is holding, I'm afraid, holding against Purdue. That will be in half the distance to the goal. It is a holding call. They made the indication as to the fact that it was holding on Purdue, and there will be an assessment against the Boilermakers. They're talking to Ross Browner right now. Skabinski was hit hard on the play in the middle and did a cartwheel in the air and fell down on about the 10-yard line. Skabinski played in LaSalle, Peru High School in Illinois. His team, too, went to the state finals in the state of Illinois. An outstanding player, although mostly a blocker last year for Scott Durking. He managed to pick up better than 800 yards rushing the assessment goes back to the four-yard line back to the four-yard line and in their own in behind their own goal line uh, the boilermakers call the next play it'll be second down at about 13. russell pope has gone into the play into the game at running back in place of mike brown so it is pope and skavinsky who are the setbacks in the eye formation both receivers are split out arnold and smith now here's the snap and the handoff this time is to Russell Pope and Pope drives right up over the five before Heimkreider gets him and knocks him down at the seven yard line. A straight ahead play trying to get a little bit of room. Give that punter an opportunity to get a little bit more leverage on the football. Russell Pope with great speed. He's about a 4-6 in the 40-yard dash. Their top uh, punt uh, and kickoff returner for the last two years at Purdue. They, of course, if he gets beyond the line of scrimmage, he gives everybody trouble. That'll bring up third down and ten as the ball is back at the original line of scrimmage about the seven and a half yard line. And here goes Herman now spinning around and giving it off and at the five yard line, at the four yard line and driven back into the end zone was Russell Pope. He took the handoff and Doug Becker met him head on. He was in the backfield. Becker almost took the handoff from him. Drilled him down at about the three yard line. So instead of gaining room for the punter, they have lost room. A loss of four yards on the play. The ball is at the three yard line. In the kick is Dave Egan and now the defensive unit of Notre Dame digs in this is one of those big moments that could produce a big play here's the snap he gets forward with the ball Egan gets it away it's a floater it's caught at the 40-yard line grabbing it at the 40-yard line is Steve Smith and Smith is down at the 42 as he tried to circle and get some running room Steve Smith makes the catch he's down at about the 42-yard line of Purdue Notre Dame so far has been spinning its wheels in its own territory too far from the goal. Even though that was a negligible return in yardage, Notre Dame at the 42 of Purdue is only 42 yards away from the goal line. Good field position. They have to cash in. Gary Forstek is calling the signals for Notre Dame. Good passer, a little weak on the run. He reads the option. They tell me very, very well, and he handles it quite well. Forstek with a first down at the Purdue 42-yard line. Has the snap, turns around, bluffs it. Pitches it out. The pitch out this time is given to Mike Curry. Curry turns the corner at the 40, at the 35, and out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Now, here's a big surprise that Dan Devine talked to me about last night. Mike Curry, a freshman from Sioux City, Iowa, number 22, is a running back in the varsity football game. He played quarterback last night in the varsity reserve game in which Notre Dame beat the Boilermakers of Purdue 14 to 13. But here's a young freshman who is a quarterback normally as a running back. Eight yards on the play. It'll be second down. And a short two yards as Forstack calls signals from the 34, gives it off to Evans, and Evans cracks over the right guard, and he got the distance it was needed for a first down before Marcus Jackson wrapped him up. block from Ernie Hughes and right guard in the middle of the Notre Dame line that allowed Evans to eat that yardage out. And it is a first down. They move the chains. The ball will be on the 32-yard line, far side. We saw the quickness that coach had said Mike Curry had in that one big play. Now he's been replaced. Yurik 
and Jerome Heavens are the setbacks as Notre Dame lines up with a first down at the Purdue 32-yard line. Horstick box the signals, bluffs up the middle, back to throw, the rush is on, he breaks away, he's going to run it to the 30, hit it to 26 and really nailed. Arrington, the left side linebacker of the Boilermakers, really lowered a boiler on him. And there's a fumble down on the field. Let's see what happened. An official timeout being taken down there. We'll have more after this special 30-second message from Lazy Boy Chairs. Forstek scrambling gains five yards hit by Fred Arrington and he is out cold for the moment on the field he'll be up though in a moment the doctors are working over him he gained five yards moved the football from the 32 down to the 27 yard line so Notre Dame will have a second and five from the Purdue 27 Forstek completing two of three passes in the short time that he's been in there 13 yards total now we're getting ready to go. Notre Dame huddling, and here's Al Wester. Notre Dame's quarterback, Rusty Lish. Excellent passer, fine runner, does the option well. Started the Miami game last year. He's in action now. Second down and five for Notre Dame at the Purdue 27-yard line. Lish is under the center. Takes the snap. He drops straight back, 12 yards. He sets up. The rush is on. Throws a little screen out there to Yurik. Yurik catches it at the 32. Hit behind the line of scrimmage by Lee Larkin. Larkin, the big defensive end on the left side for Purdue, read the play beautifully. And Notre Dame has lost yardage on the play. Not only did he read the play beautifully, but he went through two Notre Dame blockers to bring down the ball carrier. Purdue is coming up with a big, aggressive plays on defense against Notre Dame. It'll be third down with the ball now back at the 32-yard line. Third and 10 for the Irish. Ames is wide to the right, split out to the left is Dave Weimar. Big third down play, back goes Lish. He looks, he's got time. No, he runs out to the left. He'll run the football, comes to the near sideline, to the 30, the 25, the 20. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Lish has more than enough for the first down. So Rusty Lish, looking downfield, had all the time in the world to throw, couldn't find anybody. Finally, eluded a big tackle on the left side of the field, Marcus Jackson, and took it down into Purdue territory in Notre Dame. Now, as a first down, 10 yards to go, as the Irish start to roll. 17 yards for Rusty. And the clock may run out before they get more than one play. 31 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Purdue leads 10-0. Notre Dame up to the line of scrimmage. Hands under the center, Rusty Lish, long count now, has the snap, hands it off to Jerome, Heavens and Heavens, on the count of play, goes off the left guard, he's inside of the 15-yard line and down to the 12 before he's knocked down. Pat Harris along with Kevin Mott, up to make the tackle at the 12-yard line and give the Irish three yards on the play, it'll be second down and seven for Notre Dame at the Purdue 12-yard line. There goes Chris Haynes to the sidelines, and that means Ty Dickerson is coming in, probably. There's the gun. That is the end of the first quarter. With the score, Purdue 10 and Notre Dame nothing. Now this is for Firestone Tires. At the end of the first quarter from ross Eight Stadium, West Lafayette, Purdue leads Notre Dame 10 to nothing. Here are the statistics. Purdue, seven first downs, Notre Dame four. Yards rushing, Notre Dame 47, Purdue only 15. But in the passing, Purdue 79, Notre Dame eight. The Irish with a second down, seven. They have the ball at the 12-yard line of Purdue. Lish has the snap, drops back to throw. He looks in the end zone, rifles one in there, knocked down in the end zone by Roger Supan. It was intended in there for the little uh, splitty and Ty Dickerson, a slender, lanky, 180-pounder. He comes from Indianapolis, and he made a grab at it, but it was great pass defense work in there by uh, the Boilermakers. So it comes back to the 12-yard line. It'll be third down and seven for Notre Dame at that point. Kevin Mott calling the defensive signals for Purdue as they break the huddle. It's Dave Waymer who goes wide to the right. 
Marcini is in the backfield now for Notre Dame. And back goes Lish to throw. He dumps it off to the big tight end. Grabbing the football is McAfee. He's inside of the five-yard line and knocked down at that point. First down for Notre Dame. It's first down and goal to go inside of the Purdue five-yard line at the Purdue four. There was a delay pattern over the middle to McAfee. They waited for the linebackers to clear. When McAfee saw him clear and make a deep drop, he just went in front of him, and Lish just laid the ball right in his stomach. Cool playing by the young man from Belleville, Illinois. Rusty Lish brings him up to the line of scrimmage. He has the football. He hands it off to Yurik. Yurik cracks him to the right side. Over the tackle to the five-yard line. He's met head on at the five. Driven back to the six-yard line. And the officials may indicate, they indicate, I believe, he's lost a couple of yards. Fred Arrington is the man who drives him back with a tremendous tackle. Arrington's a tremendously impressive football player, reacting to the ball beautifully. Uh, they, I think, were expecting pass on that last play by Notre Dame, but Arrington reacted so quickly and got around the ball that he, Notre Dame was thrown back to the six-yard line. A loss of two yards, and the Irish huddle back at the Purdue 20-yard line. As they break, Tom Dolman in the game is wide out to the left. Arsini and Yurik are the setbacks. Lish with the snap, rolls to the right, he looks, he throws, Yurik has the ball, into the end zone, the edge of the end zone, it's good, touchdown Notre Dame! <laughs> 42 yards in 10 plays, the Irish move the football. And finally, it was Lish finding Terry Urich at the one or two yard line with the football. He came right into the corner and went out of bounds, but he got some of the end zone as he went through. The touchdown is there. The Irish trail 10 to 6. They'll try the point after. Dave Reeve will boot. Here's the snap, a little high. He gets his foot into it. The kick is up. It is good. So, there is timeout here with the score. Purdue 10, Notre Dame 7. Well, Notre Dame strikes back, getting field position on the 42. They took it in from there. The pass to York was well covered by Purdue. They, and Larkins had uh, Yurik well covered on the play, but Yurik made a nice catch and a diving, hustling attempt into the end zone to get the touchdown. And, of course, the pass was well thrown by Lish since the coverage was good. So the score is Purdue 10, Notre Dame 7, 13.42 to go in the second quarter. Dave Reeve tees it up at the 40 and down deep for the Boilermakers, Rick Moss and Russell Pope. They're around the three-yard line as they wait for the kick. Big halftime show and some interesting guests coming your way over Mutual. Long kick, down deep. Pope has it at the three, out to the five, the ten, up the middle of the field to the 15. Hurdle players to the 22. He's nailed at the 22-yard line. Tom Flynn is responsible for the stop for the Irish, and the ball is put down at the 21. So it'll be first down for Boiler for the Purdue Boilermakers at their own 21-yard line, and they lead in this football game 10-7. The second quarter just underway here at Ross Aid Stadium. Up to the line of scrimmage. Ray Smith is out wide to the right. Reggie Arnold is to the left. The quarterback, Mark Herman, drops back in the pocket. A good 12 yards, sets up for it. Intercepted by Doug Becker at the 30. He's down to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Doug Becker, all the way for Notre Dame. There's a flag on the play back at the 4-yard line. A flag on the play at the 4-yard line, and the officials are bringing the football out of the end zone, and let's see the call. penalty against it, but they get field position and get the ball in Purdue territory. This was the first one that was thrown badly thrown by Herman. He underthrew his receiver. Becker was on about the 35-yard line, leaped up, and he grabbed it. The ball is going to be on the 18-yard line, where Notre Dame has it on the near hash mark. They'll have first down 10 yards to go. 
Residency Edward Little and all of the rest of our mutual staff hope that you're enjoying this Notre Dame game as we bring you the annual battle between the Boilermakers of Purdue and the Fighting Irish. So after they step it off, from the point of the infraction, it's brought out to the 18-yard line, and it is first down and first and 10 for the Irish at the Purdue 18. Here's the snap and the handoff is to Heavens, and Heavens cuts right back up the middle. He got back to the line of scrimmage. He may have picked up a yard, but no more than that. Tina Turner, along with linebacker Kevin Mott, were in to stop him at the 17, so call it second down and nine for Notre Dame from the Purdue 17. Notre Dame has had trouble getting its ground game going this afternoon. The pass and the quarterback scrambles have been the big plays, and on that last one, they tried to cut back. Harrington and Mott, the linebackers for Purdue. Yurik and Heavens are the setbacks behind Rusty Lish, and Lish with the snap. Starts on the option, pitches it out to Yurik. Yurik has to turn on the dime. At the 20, he has to cut back. He can't get outside, and he's knocked down back at the original line of scrimmage, the 18-yard line. There was Lish. A little hesitant about the pitch out, taking a little more a little more time than usual. And the defensive unit of the Boilermaker stringing the play out. And that's the idea. On the option, you string it out as far as you can. Third and ten. Notre Dame at the Purdue. 18-yard line. Ames is wide left. Waymer is wide to the right. And we're going to have a timeout. Charge to Purdue, believe it or not. So, with the score... Purdue 10 and Notre Dame 7. There's a timeout on the field. Now this for the Teamsters. We pause briefly for station identification. This is Mutual, your news and sports radio network. You could be at the next Notre Dame game with free tickets. Listen for details on WAIT Chicago. Purdue leads at 10 to 7 at ross Age Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. But Notre Dame has possession of the ball. However, the situation is not the best since it's third down, 10 yards to go. We've been speaking about the big play that Dan Devine wants from the Notre Dame team that he says Notre Dame hasn't come up with in the first two games. If they come up with it, now would be the time as Lish gets his team in the huddle. Steve Orsini is in the backfield along with Terry Urich. They're the setbacks. Behind quarterback Rusty Lish and both receivers are split wide. Both wide men out there. Lish is back to throw. He goes into the end zone. It is a touchdown. Urich is behind the cornerback. He beat Pat Harris in the corner. Touchdown this time, and it stands. 18 yards in three plays, and Notre Dame takes the lead in this football game. What they did was simply clear out the zone to the right. They sent uh, somebody out of the backfield. The cornerback picked him up, and then uh, Notre Dame sent uh, Yurik into the end zone. He uh, had the pass lofted right into his hands. The area was cleared by the fate. Ted Brickmeyer does the holding, and here's Dave Reeve for the point. Steps forward, puts his foot into it, and it is right there. So there is a timeout with the score. Notre Dame, 14. Purdue, 10. So Notre Dame is back in it. They've taken the lead, 14 to 10, with 12-11 to go in the second quarter. Scores from around the country. Oklahoma, 20. Ohio State, 14. That's at halftime. Arizona, 9. Iowa, nothing in the second quarter. And it's Michigan, 14. Navy, 7 in the fourth quarter. Navy giving them a fight. Wyoming, 16 to 3 over Michigan State in the third quarter. And by the way, remember that after the game, there'll be a complete rundown of all the scores on the Slidell scoreboard. That'll be following the game and on mutual. Notre Dame had 15 yards stepped off against them. The infraction for that penalty came on play following the kick. So now the Irish will have to kick off from their 25-yard line. Dave Reeves will be kicking with the ball teed up at the Notre Dame 25, and the deep backs are Pope and Moss. And here is the kick, a high one he hangs up there. It is Pope with the ball at the 20, up to the 25, to the 30, towards the sidelines, the near sidelines. He is wrestled down, hit down by uh, Harrison, by Randy Harrison, at about the 34-yard line. Notre Dame has scored two touchdowns in a matter of a minute and a half, both on pass plays from Lish to Urich. 
We are experiencing line trouble from the network. Please stand by. So now, it is up to Purdue to get back into the game. 14 to 10, the Irish lead. And the freshman quarterback, Mark Herman, leads them up to the line of scrimmage. There's Brown and Skabinski in the backfield. And here's the staff and a handoff to Skabinski. He tiptoes up to the 35-yard line. It's piled up at the 36 by Ross Browner. A gain of about two yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight for Purdue from their own 36-yard line. Notre Dame defensive line has been pretty well snowballing any rushing attempt by the Purdue defensive backfield, by the Purdue offensive line, rather. Uh, they haven't been able to make the big blocks since Kaminsky has been stopped. Both receivers are wide to the right this time. That's Reggie Arnold and Ray Smith out there with Smith in the slot. Now, here's Herman back 12 yards to throw. Throws it right over to the tight end. Dave Young has it at the 35, the 40, the 45-yard line. He's wrestled down at the 45 by Jim Browning. Dave Young landing right across from the tight end and making the grab. A little delay, just a momentary delay to watch the linebackers drop, and then he goes. That's three catches for Young in the ball game. And it's the first down for Purdue at their own 45. First down, 10 yards to go for the Wallabakers with uh, 11-13 to go in the second quarter. They break the huddle. John Skavinsky, Mike Brown, the setbacks in the pro set. Herman has the snap and gives it off to Brown. And Brown cracks in to the right side. Ken Dyke, head on at the 46-yard line. He may have picked up two yards on the play, but no more than that. Ross Browner and Ken Dyke. That front wall for the Irish at the moment defensively. Scott Zedek and Ross Browner are the end. Jeff Weston and Ken Dyke are the tackles. The linebackers are Becker on the right. Mike Ryder on the left. Bob Gulley is the middle linebacker and occasionally slides into the front four to make it uh, a five-man front. So it is second down and eight. And here goes Herman rolling out to the left, running and throwing on the run. Completed the 40-yard line. Dave Young makes a catch at the 40-yard line. He's down to the Notre Dame 37. Ed Bergmeyer is over. Along with Steve Heimkrater. 16 yards for Purdue and another first down. Decker had him well covered. He was right behind him. However, the ball was thrown right on the letters. And Young has been making some big catches for the Purdue Boilermakers. The amazing thing is this young freshman quarterback, Mark Herman. Can you imagine a fellow who throws like Dawson Greasy? Well, as a freshman, he's doing it. 10 of 16 for 104 yards. First down play. He rolls and runs wide to the right. Looks and throws the long ball.
Dykes in that backfield behind Lish. We're waiting and we hope we'll have a report on Gary Forsett, who was injured in the ball game early. Now, up to the line they come. Wide to the left is Wayman. But here's the handoff and breaking inside and finding daylight up to the 14-yard line is Terry Urich. Urich pulls his way out to about the 14 before Ken Lauschen and Willie Harris bring him down. Five yards he picks up. It'll be second down and five for Notre Dame at their own 14-yard line, and they trail in the ball game 17 to 14. They had the Boilermakers. 14 to 10, and in a matter of six plays, Purdue came right back. This tight end, Ken McAfee, up at the 24-yard line, and Pat Harris wraps him up. There was a bootleg rollout to the right by Rusty Lish looking for his tight end to break across. McAfee was there, but that bootleg to the right is something that's hard to believe. You don't see a quarterback doing that very often. Well, what they were trying to do is to get the linebackers out of the area, and they succeeded with the fake going to the left. Down, Notre Dame at their 24-yard line. A gain of 10 yards on that play. Lish parking the signal. Hands it off to Terry Urich, and Urich gets wrestled down at the 23. He may have lost a yard or two. As Dean Borgioni, who is now in at the nose guard, came barreling through there and brought him down back at the 22-yard line. Loss of two yards. It'll be second down for the Irish. Second and 12 from their 22. Borgione had a big hole. Nobody blocked him on that play, and he came in untouched. Apparently, he was supposed to be faked out, or else they figured the middle guard wouldn't be that quick. But he got in on the runner and brought him down. The Irish huddling between their 10 and 15-yard line. Waymer breaks and goes wide to the left. Haynes is out to the right-hand side. Evans and Orsini are the setbacks, and back goes Lish to throw. He's got plenty of time. He looks, he throws. Haynes has it at the 50. He's down to the Purdue 46-yard line. Knocked down at the 46 by Willie Harris. A great catch, and all by his lonesome there for the moment was Chris Haynes. That's right, because uh, the other quarterback, that is Pat Harris, was driven back too deep. He was giving him too much leeway on that 32-yard play. He was respecting the speed of Chris Haynes too much, and Haynes grabbed the ball as he cut toward the sideline, and hit. there was a perfectly thrown ball by young Rusty Lish. Haynes goes out. He goes to the sidelines and is replaced. Waymer is in, and Waymer is out wide to the left. That's five in a row now that Lish is hit on. He has a first down at the Purdue 47-yard line. With the snap, he rolls to the left. He looks, he sets and fires just off the fingertips of Dave Waymer. Waymer on the far sidelines made a dive for it at the 37, but couldn't hold on. The Lish had a little problem on that throw, and the problem was this, Jerome King. He was almost covering that play perfectly. So what you have to do is throw it about three feet beyond the receiver's fingertips so the receiver can have a chance to dive for the ball, and it's too far toward the sideline for the defensive back to get. He did that, but Waymer just didn't have the height and the reach to get that football. It was still a well-thrown ball. Barty and Jerome Heavens, Steve Barcini and Jerome Heavens are the setback. And they're strong to the right as the backfield lines up now. Lish, 6 of 10, six of 10 for 69. Rose to the right, looks and throws. Got it down by Fred Arrington. It was intended for the big tight end, Ken McAfee. Arrington went up in the air and got his hands on it and slapped it down. In third down situations, Notre Dame has been successful three of the five times that they've uh, been in this position. Well... Purdue has done the same thing. They are going, they are right now three for five. Haynes goes out. Dickerson comes in at the split in for the Irish. So we have a third and ten situation. Notre Dame with the ball at the 46-yard line of the Boilermakers of Purdue. And back to throw. Lish straight back. Look. Can't find a man open. Runs wide to the left. He's got to run with the football. It's back outside. Gets across the field to the 30. The 41-yard line. Out of bounds at the 40. Nobody was open on the 
play. So he just decided to outrun Jeff Seneca. He did that. Seneca was eventually blocked on the play. And then a linebacker in the way, so he scooted for the sideline and took it out of bounds. The ball just shy of the 40-yard line, and it'll be a fourth and four for Notre Dame. Notre Dame at least got itself with that 32-yard pass out of bad field position, and they'll be kicking the ball and probably putting Purdue in a situation where they will be in bad field position. Seven minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the first half. Purdue leading 17 to 14 over the Irish. Jerome King and Pat Harris drop back deep now as Kevin Muno comes in to punt for Notre Dame. Muno is standing on the 45-yard line of the Irish, waiting for the snap. Overcast day here. He is not going to punt, started to fake a, a, a pass, then elected to kick. And he kicks it out of bounds at the 11-yard line. How about that? Bruno stood up, pumped once with his arm as though he was going to throw the football, then kicked the ball 29 yards out of bounds at the 12-yard line. I don't know whether that was a planned play or not. I know that Bruno saw that Purdue didn't have anybody rushing, so he figured maybe I'll fake it and make him come in. And that way we'll get a better uh, coverage by our Notre Dame men going down the field. That might be his thought. But I'm sure that Purdue, once they started to rush, uh, were thinking about blocking that kick. The Boilermakers lead 17 to 14. They have possession at their own 12-yard line. Up to the line of scrimmage is Mark Herman with his hands under the center, pitching the ball out to the fullback. Skabinski wide to the left side, turns in over the left tackle. He's up to the 13-yard line and down by Scott Zedek at that point. Doug Becker came up to add the locks on. He may not have gained anything at all on that running play. The officials are putting the ball down at the 12-yard line. So there's no gain on the play as Skabinski tries to turn the left in and can't do it. It'll be second down 10. Purdue back on the five-yard line, breaking the huddle. Both receivers wide to the right. Ray Smith and Reggie Arnold are out there. The setbacks are spread wide, and here's Herman back to throw. Plenty of time. Looks over the middle. Dumps it off. Dave Young has it. To the 20. He's to the 25. Young is knocked down at the 26-yard line. That's a play that Notre Dame has worked very well in the past games and has also used to with telling effect to McAfee. And now Purdue is starting to use it. This is their third completion on that delay to the tight end over the middle. And Notre Dame had better make some adjustments with its linebackers in order to stop this play. Line of scrimmage will be the 26. Six and a half minutes with the clock running left in the first half. And the Boilermakers lead Notre Dame 17 to 14. There's Ray Smith wide to the left. Arnold out to the right. On eye formation in the backfield. A quick pass over the middle. Batted down. Herman spun around, jumped into the air, tried to dump one off quickly there to Reggie Arnold, but Steve Heimkreider up high slapped it away. An incompleted forward pass. Heimkreider, the leading tackler of the Notre Dame team, uh, has good height at about six foot three, and he got up and tipped it, and Bob Golick was also in the area, so the Notre Dame linebackers responded well on that last play. The Irish line now is beginning to retain the running game of Purdue. That's going to put all the pressure on the young freshman quarterback, Mark Herman. He has both his receivers to the wide side of the field. And he hands it off this time to Mike Brown. Wide to the left. Brown tries to turn in at the 28-yard line. And Ken Dyke lovers him back at the 28. The officials say the 27-yard line. A gain of just about a yard. It'll be third down and nine for Purdue from their 27. You mentioned how the Notre Dame defensive line has been handling the rush by Purdue. Purdue has only gained about 13 yards on the ground up to this point in the game. Scott Zedek, Ross Browner, Ken Dyke, and Jeff Weston, the front four for Notre Dame. The linebackers, Becker, Golick, and Heimkreider. Big third down play. Herman knows it, he sprints back to set up. He looks, he throws. It's completed to 45. To the midfield strike goes Arnold. He's down to the 45. To the 40. Breaks away to the 30. Out of bounds at the Notre Dame 25. A great pattern by Reggie Arnold. Arnold. 
Bowen was by his votes and made the grab. The play covers 48 yards, and he fought for the last 20. He certainly did. He broke four tackles on the 37-yard line. He was in once, hit again on the 30, broke a tackle by Doug Becker on about the 25, and then finally brought down by Jim Browner. 13 for 20 for Herman, 204 yards. Five minutes and 26 seconds remain in the first half. As Purdue lines up with a first down at the Irish 25-yard line. Herman taking the ball and rolling out to the left. Looks, overshoots the intended receiver as he throws down to the five-yard line, trying to spot Bart Burrell. There's a flag on the play, and I believe we've got a holding penalty coming up. Holding against the Purdue Boilermakers, they'll be conferring with Notre Dame on the uh, far hash mark. The most exciting football game in college football today. The University of Notre Dame and the Boilermakers of Purdue. And with 5.20 remaining in the second in the first half, Purdue leads Notre Dame 17 to 14. The ball is back to the Notre Dame 43-yard line after the penalty is stepped off. And here's Herman back to throw. He's hit just as he lets the ball go. It's caught at the 14 and all the way into a touchdown goes Russell Pope. Pope made the catch. He scores. of the Irish have been burned again and Purdue takes a 23 to 14 lead Russell Pope circling out of the backfield went down the sideline he was by his lonesome Herman now has completed 14 of 21 for 247 yards and here is Scott Sovereign to try the extra point there's the kick and it is good score is Purdue 24 Notre Dame 14 more after this special 30 second message from the Teamsters at last drive 88 yards in six plays Jim Browner is down deep along with Randy Harrison along the goal line about the two yard line Sovereign kicks a, a slider it's Browner at the five up to the 10 with a return to the 15 the 20 the 25 out to the 28 yard line and nailed at the 28 Kingsbury is the man who brought him down, so it'll be first down for Notre Dame at their own 28-yard line. Five minutes and six seconds remain in the first half. In the backfield, the setbacks, Terry Urich and Jerome Heavens as they line up with Lish under the center. He has the snap, he rolls out to the left, he'll throw. He looks and fires to the sidelines, it's complete over there to Dave Wehmer. Up at about the 36-yard line, Wehmer makes the reception. That's very close to a first down. Very close to a first down for the Irish. Here goes Haynes out at the split in, and Ty Dickerson comes in from Notre Dame. The ball is put down just over the 36-yard line of the Irish. 4.38 remaining in the first half, and they trail 24 to 14. Lish with a long count, has the snap. He comes to the right this time on the option. He looks, he throws on the run. Weimer has it at the 45. Knocked out of bounds as he reaches the 45-yard line. And getting up down there from the bottom is Jerome King. Scores for around the country, Oklahoma 20, Ohio State 14, third quarter. At halftime, Arizona leads Iowa 9 to nothing. In the fourth quarter, Navy 7, Michigan 14, third quarter, Wyoming 16, Michigan State 10. Don't forget the Spidell scoreboard on mutual following the game. Weimer splits wide to the left now as they come up to the line in a quick count and Lish goes back to throw in a hurry. Looks over the middle, got his man wide open. It is Chris Haynes that he hits at the 33, 35, 36 yard line and down he goes at that point. Haynes made the grab, made the stutter step, tried to hold on to it. Goes down at about the 37, the official said. Big gain and a big first down for the Irish as they move the football through the air. 18 yards on that play. Here's Dean Borgioni coming in at the nose guard to play. No, as a linebacker this time for Purdue. Lish on the option down the right side. Pitches out to Heavens. Heavens gets a block. Turns in at the 35. Down to the 33-yard line. He is hit down at that point. Getting up from the bottom is Keena Turner. Go 
total passing yardage, and this is a little bit of a stunner, Purdue already has 247 yards, Notre Dame 117. We've had 364 passing yards in this first half. Heavily overcast, and the threat of rain has been predominant all day. It is second down for the Irish, second and six with the ball at the 33-yard line of Purdue. Rusty Lish, two steps, quick throw over to the left side, incomplete. Throwing for his tight end, Ken McAfee, and I don't believe McAfee turned around. McAfee never had a chance really for that ball. It was a brilliant play by Keena Turner out of Chicago Vocational Sky High School, his second year in college ball. He got in front of McAfee and just put a big hand up and batted the ball away. And by the way, it was perfect coverage by Purdue. Lish is 9 of 15 for 104 yards. Dave Wehmer is wide to the left. Dickerson out to the right. Man in motion to the right-hand side is Heavens this time. And Lish rolls out to his left-hand side. He's going to throw. No, he'll run the football to the far sideline. Out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Tina Turner refused to let him go around the end and ran him out of bounds. He just strung the play out and carried him out at about the 30-yard line. Turner has great quickness in high school. He played both tight end, in other words, worked on offense, as well as playing a brilliant defensive end. He's the leadership kind of player you want. He was coached by one of the best, the living legend, Bernie from O'Brien in the Chicagoland area. Turner has never played on a losing football team. That's going to bring up fourth down. The ball is at the 31-yard line, so it'll be fourth down and four. Rusty-ish. Is running this ball club and they are going for it. The Irish are going for it and Lish has the snap. Rolling to the right. He looks and throws. It is knocked down. Knocked out of the hand of Dave Lamer. Jerome King cut right in between he and the ball and slapped it away. And Purdue will take over. Now you talk about the big play in a football game. That certainly was it for Purdue. Jerome King quickly coming in front of the ball when for a moment it looked like Notre Dame would have a completed pass on the play. There was double coverage, by the way, by Purdue, but Notre Dame had a man who was inches in the open. Let me tell you this, Mark Herman has some fine receivers. Reggie Arnold, great speed. Ray Smith, fine outside man. Both of them are split out. Both setbacks are wide. The handoff is to Skavinsky. Skavinsky over the left tackle, out to the 35, fights his way to the 39-yard line. Ted Bergmeyer, the right corner of the Irish, finally puts the pin on him. There's a gain of just about eight yards. Now Purdue staying on the ground wants to run that clock out there's two minutes and 35 seconds remaining before halftime the boilermakers lead the irish 24 to 14. a heavily overcast day but ever so often the sun comes blazing through the clouds and lights up this stadium it is second down and two purdue at their own 39 yard line the i formation Herman has the snap and gives it to the first man coming through, and that's Skavinsky, and Skavinsky may have the first down. He barrels over the 40. He got to the 42. I believe he does, but they may call for the measurement. Although Purdue is leading by 10 points, 24 to 14, this is the first time that Purdue has put together two successful running plays in this football game. They have run for about 16 yards up to this point in the game. The ball will be just shy of the 42-yard line, and it is the first down, 10 yards to go with 2.05 to go in the second quarter. All right, Purdue with the ball at their 42-yard line, and as they break the huddle, here's Ray Smith wide to the right. Little Reggie Smith splits out to the left in the backfield. You've got Skavinsky and Mike Brown. The quarterback is young Mark Herman, and Herman gives it to Skavinsky. Skavinsky breaks one tackle at the 40, gets to the 43, up to the 45, and is down at the 45. Bob Golick and Ted Bergmeyer converge to make the stop. That ball is just is over the 45-yard line and placed down now with the tip in at the 46. Well, Scott Zedek had him, had his arms around him, around the ankles on about the 40-yard line, but Skabinski, a very powerful Big Ten fullback, just kept churning and got away from it. Russell Pope comes into the backfield replacing Mike Brown, so it'll be Skabinski and Pope in the backfield as the setbacks with a second down coming up here now. Second and about six. Back goes Herman to throw. He looks. He sends a long one. Bergmeyer has it intercepted by Notre Dame as Bergmeyer picks it off at the Irish 22. 
Well, Bert Meyer was waiting for that all the way. He made a deep drop in his zone defense. That's the third Notre Dame interception. He waited for the ball and grabbed it. And he was about in the same situation that Heimkreider was on the touchdown play. Heimkreider's problem was on that pass to Raymond Smith, he fell down. So the Irish now have the job of trying to play catch-up football. They trail by 10 points, and they're going to have to watch the clock. They have a minute and six seconds before the end of the first half. 24 to 14, Purdue leads Notre Dame in a big surprise. The Irish trying to fight back, and Notre Dame has possession at their own 22. Rusty Lish with one backfield man behind him, R.C. He drops back to throw. Everybody's out. He pumps it over the middle of the 25. Complete. Ben McAfee makes the grab and is knocked down immediately by the defensive left end, Lee Larkin. There are men around uh, McAfee wherever he goes on a pass pattern. He's had double coverage by the Purdue defense all afternoon. No timeout, no huddle on this. Arsini in the backfield there. Here's the snap and Lish running wide to his left. It's caught and wrestled down way behind the line of scrimmage. Tina Turner slashed across from the defensive right end. He caught him at the 15-yard line, and he dumped him at the 14. A big loss for Notre Dame quarterback Rusty Lish. The score right prior to halftime, 29 seconds to go, is Purdue 24 and Notre Dame 14. The big play now. That's what the Irish need, the big play. In the backfield, Jim Stone. And back to throw goes Lish. He sets up, he looks, he goes with the bomb. It is intercepted by Purdue's Rock Supan. Supan intercepts at the Notre Dame 45 and is wrestled all the way back to the midfield strike before he goes down. Purdue will take over. 22 seconds remain and the Boilermakers have it at the Notre Dame 48. As the Irish went for broke and they went broke. Well, that was one of those plays where you throw a long one and throw a prayer. Four Purdue men in the area. They sent the backs and the, and the wide receivers out to the sideline, sent McAfee up the middle. He was the lone man there, and Purdue saw it coming. He's gotten coverage all afternoon. I don't know about you, Pat, but I've seen all I want to see of quarterback Mark Herman. This fella is really a good one. He is a sparkler, 6'5", 180 pounds. First down at the Irish 48, and he has the snap. He rolls to the left. He sets up beautifully and quickly. He throws to the sidelines. It's incomplete. Down along the sidelines, his intended receiver, I think, had gotten out of position, Tim Eubank. Couldn't get to the football, so an incompleted pass out of bounds stops the clock and brings it back with 17 seconds to go. Notre Dame does not have a single sack here in the first half against Herman. Herman has received tremendous support from his offensive line. They've been coached well in pass blocking. Not a single sack for Notre Dame. It'll be second down and 10 for Purdue at the Notre Dame 48. And both the wide receivers are split out to the right. Reggie Arnold and Ray Smith are both to the right side. Here is Herman. With a snap back to throw, looks and throws over the middle to his tight end. Dave Young has it, down to the 40-yard line, knocked down at the 41. That is his sixth catch. There's seven seconds, and the clock is running. Wait a minute, there's a whistle. Purdue has stopped the clock, or have they? With one second, it runs out on the clock. Apparently, the official timekeeper did not get the signal fast enough, but there is playing time left. I think the officials are indicating six seconds remain. Time enough for Purdue to get up one more play. We're going to try a field goal. Scott Savarine will be in the kick with Purdue leading 24 to 14. Savarine kicked one from 40 yards last week. He kicked three of them, and one of them was from 40. This will be from just short of 51 yards once you count the 10 yards of the end zone. So that's going to be a long, long boot for Purdue. And holding will be Steve Barr. He will place the ball down at the 48-yard line. Kicking is Scott Savarin, waiting for the snap. A 58-yard field goal attempt. He steps forward, puts his foot into it. It's off to the left, and it is short. It is no good. And so, there is the gun. That is the end of the first half here with the score. Purdue 24, Notre Dame 14. Now this for Metropolitan Life.